Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Ik wil vandaag met jullie over obedience en zelfcontrole praten. See, the ones that are really excited, I've challenged them to be excited about my teaching this weekend on discipline and self-control. Because the fact is, <laughs> I love obedient people. You know, without discipline and self-control, you're never going to have what you say you want to have or be the person that you say you want to be. We do have discipline and self-control because they're fruit of the Spirit. They're in us as a seed, and the more we use them, the more we develop them, the more they grow. You know, you all have muscles, but you can't all feel your muscles because they're still little seeds. You need to work them. You need to use them. When I first started working out about four and a half years ago, I'd never worked out with weights, and I had semi-decent muscle tone because of what I do up here, but nothing really to be very proud of. And after I'd been working out about four months, I was sitting one day and I went to rub the back of my leg and I felt a lump. And I thought, oh my gosh, don't tell me I've got a growth. <laughs> I got a little bit scared and then I felt the other leg and I had one there too. And all of a sudden I thought, it's a muscle. I've actually got a muscle that's big enough to feel it. Well, see, you have the fruit of self-control, but maybe you're just not accustomed to using it. Maybe you're more accustomed to giving in to how you feel. Is there anybody here who's tempted to just kind of give in to how you feel? Or maybe you give in to what you think or what you want. What we want, think, and feel is our soul. When the Bible talks about the flesh, it's talking about a combination of your soul, what you want, think, and feel, and just your body. But we're to be led by the Spirit. We're not to be led around by our own thoughts, our own will, and our own emotions, but we're to be led by the Spirit. Now, if I ask you tonight, how many of you think that being obedient to God is extremely important, how many of you would say yes? All right. But you know, it takes self-control to do that. Because everything that God asks us to do is not something that we're going to go, oh, yay, I've been waiting for you to tell me to do that. <laughs> Sometimes you're going to be wanting to do something really, really, really bad, and you may already be right on the verge of doing it. And then you're going to finally hear from God what He's been trying to say for a while, no. It takes self-control to stop right then and let your flesh have its little fit, but you go ahead and obey God. You know, if you don't give your flesh what it wants, it gets depressed, it pouts, feels sorry for itself. Sometimes it'll just get real, like angry and upset, and we have to learn that None of that makes that much difference. The thing that is the most important in all of our lives is that we learn how to be promptly, totally obedient to God. Now, let me just be bold enough to say that some of the problems that some of the people in this building have not all. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I know some of you are so wonderful that we could never imagine how wonderful you are. <laughs> I'm sure you could come up here tonight and give lessons on wonderful. But there might just be a few out there that needs to hear me say this, and perhaps a few others watching by TV. There are some of you that some of your problems are strictly from disobedience. You know better than to do some of the things you're doing, and you just keep doing them, making excuses for them, and it opens the door for the devil. 
Well, sister, I'm resisting the devil, and he has to flee. James 4, 7. But you know, that's not even really what that scripture says. You're quoting half of it. It actually says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. We can't be disobedient, and then when the devil gives us trouble, try to rebuke him. I tried that. I rebuked until my rebuker was worn out. I didn't have one good rebuke left in me. I came into this back in the 70s when there was camp meetings everywhere and all kinds of seminars on spiritual warfare and warfare praying and pulling down strongholds with prayer. And I tell you, I screamed at the devil till I hardly had a voice left. But what I needed was to be obedient. How many of you noticed that Jesus never had much trouble with the devil? He didn't do any screaming, any yelling. <laughs> he came in, the devil said, <laughs> Why? He was totally obedient. He walked in the presence of God. He walked in love. He stayed in peace. We have to learn how to be promptly obedient to God. I want to start with a few questions. How many things do you still have in your possession that God has told you to give away? Now you hear that little <laughs> I love that because you know what that is? It's a gotcha. <laughs> Let me say it again. How many things do you still have in your possession that God has put it on your heart to give it away? It may be something you haven't used in five years and you heard somebody say they needed one. And you almost got radical and obeyed God. But instead, you thought, well, I may need that someday. So you still have it sitting somewhere collecting dust. That's one of the areas where we really need to learn very prompt, radical obedience is to give whatever God tells us to give. And I'm going to tell you a story that's going to help you along those lines. See, I believe that whatever we have, whether it's money or things, if it doesn't have God's anointing on it for us, it's not going to bless us. So once God tells you, and when I say tells you, I don't mean that you're hearing voices all the time. I mean, you just know in your heart. Come on, we're, I mean, we're Christians. We got the love of God in us. I mean, common sense tells you if you've got four coats and somebody's cold, you ought to get some of them out of your closet and give them away. That you don't need to be a genius to figure that out. And one of the ways that God tests our faith and tests our levels of obedience is by asking us to give away things that we're attached to. And we need to learn to get detached from our attachments. We need to hold things loosely in our hands and understand that we're stewards of God, not owners and possessors of anything. Well, you might as well clap because it's true. Everything God asks you to give away is not going to be something old and worn out that you don't have any use for anymore. Sometimes He's going to ask you to give things that you really like, and He may even ask you to give it to somebody you don't like. Ouch! Oh, gosh! It's bad enough to have to give it away, and now you want me to give it to somebody I don't even like? Everything that God asks us to do is something that's going to ultimately work out for our good. If you don't understand and leave here with any takeaway tonight but that, I want you to leave with that takeaway. Every single thing that God ever asks you to do in His Word are prompted by His Holy Spirit. Whether it's a Logos Word, a written Word in the Bible, or a Rhema Word, a Word that comes to you directly from the Holy Spirit. It is only for your good and for your benefit. It may not be easy. It may not be comfortable. 
It may not be something you want to do. It may not even be anything that makes sense to you or that you understand. But once we know that we know that we know that it's God, then we better move and take action. Because we're only cheating ourselves if we don't. Now, you see, I had the funny idea for a lot of years that I could do what I wanted to all week and then just go to church on Sunday, and that made everything okay. And a lot of people think that. But that's not God's plan for our life. We are destined, our destiny is to be molded into the image of Jesus Christ, to become Christ-like in all of our ways. We have the fruit of the Holy Spirit in us as seeds, and we're to work with God to develop that fruit. Well, back to this situation about keeping things that God tells us to part with. I had a rhinestone bracelet. You know, rhinestones are not expensive. I don't even remember now where I got it. I think somebody gave it to me, and it was, it was just really cute. It, it had on the top of it the rhinestones made a bow, and I just thought it was really pretty. And so I was really enjoying wearing it and just really, really liked it. You know, I kind of more than liked it. I like really, really liked it. Well, there was a girl that sang on our worship team at that time that I just kept kind of feeling like God wanted me to give it to her. And I didn't want to give it to her. <laughs> I wanted to keep it. And she was a kind of a real thin girl, and so I said, oh, God, that ain't going to fit her. She's so little, it'll fall right off her arm. <laughs> and then after using that excuse, you know, because I would see her at conferences, so I'd go through this at conferences, you know. So here I am standing up here telling everybody else they need to give and be obedient to God, and God's dealing with me behind the scenes about giving away that bracelet. And then I thought, well, you know, she probably, probably her skin color looks better with gold, and it's silver, so I don't think it's going to look good on her. Does anybody know anything about the silly excuses we make to not do what God is asking us to do? And some of you may have some huge problems in your life and you think, oh, for crying out loud, you know, talk to me about something important. Well, you see, if we don't learn how to be obedient in little things, then we're never going to be obedient in small things. God trains us with little things for the big things. So don't fool yourself tonight and think that the little things in your life are not important because God cares very much about little things. And don't think that just because you do something that you shouldn't be doing and nobody's looking that it doesn't matter. God is always looking. Always looking. And so... It took me a while, but I finally reluctantly gave her the bracelet, and of course, this has been many years ago, and I made quite a display out of it all. Well, here, God told me to give you this, and you know, it's a real sacrifice for me because I really love it, but you know, I want you to know, you know, how much I care about you, and blah, blah, and gave her the bracelet. So then every time, and you know, it wasn't even about the bracelet. You know, see, it's not about God taking your things away from you. The point is, is that God wants to bless people. And she didn't really need the bracelet. She just needed me to pay some special attention to her and do something for her. And a lot of times it's not the thing. It's that God uses the thing as a means of conveying His love. God uses things to show love to people. Did you hear me? God uses things to show love to people. Everybody likes presents. I don't care who you are. You like presents. And so she would, she would wear the bracelet, and I'd see her at conferences, and I just kept saying little things, you know, like, oh, that sure is a pretty bracelet. I hope you're enjoying it. And so bottom line was, was eventually she said, you know, I feel that the Lord wants me to give this back to you. <laughs> and I thought, yes, he does. <laughs> but now here's what I want to tell you that was a lesson for me. And I do believe that 
that God did set this whole thing up for me to learn what I'm getting ready to tell you. I took that bracelet home and I put it in my jewelry drawer. And it still lays there to, that, to this day, which has been probably 10, maybe 15 years ago. And I will always keep it as a reminder because every time I would try to wear that bracelet after that, I just didn't like it. I put it on, didn't look right. I'd think, this thing's not even shiny. I don't even like it. And the lesson that God taught me is, once I tell you to give something away, it no longer is anointed for you. Come on now. It no longer is anointed for you, and if you keep it, you'll never enjoy it after that. And I would even go so far as to say that if God tells you to give something financially and you don't give it, chances are the devil's going to take it away from you. The Bible says if we are obedient to God in our giving, then he rebukes the devourer for our sake. But we actually can open doors in our life for the enemy. Now, I'm not saying that every one of you that has any kind of problems has got some disobedience and has opened the door for the enemy. There are many reasons why the enemy comes after us. He comes after us when we're doing something right, and he comes after us when we're doing something wrong. It's kind of hard to figure out sometimes which one it is. But don't be so foolish as to not open your heart up to God and say, is there something here that I'm missing? Is there something I need to see? If I would say tonight, how many of you have areas in your life or an area where you know that you are being disobedient to God? <laughs> They're more honest over here than you are. <laughs> I didn't even ask for a show of hands and half the people put their hands up. Okay, now look at me. Let me get in my mother's chair and talk to you. <laughs> that is just so silly. Because you don't have peace when you do that. You feel guilt and condemn. I know, because I did it. I'm not talking to you about anything that I have not had a lot of experience with. I did it, and I did it way too long. But I'm asking you to stop doing it because God has got so much more for you. He's got more peace, more joy, more power, more authority, more anointing, more blessings. Our God is the God of more than enough. He's El Shaddai, not El Chipo. But what happens in our life is directly connected to our levels of obedience. Our salvation is purchased with the blood of Christ. But God tests us. He gives us a little bit to be responsible for. And he leaves at that level for a little while, and he tests us. And if we're obedient, learn how to obey God in that area, then we'll get a little promotion. And then we'll stay there for a while, and he tests us on that level. Wonder how many people are in this building tonight that are mad at somebody? Well, you guys are pretty honest. I'm not even asking you to lift your hands up, and you're going... Now, the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't give the devil a foothold in your life. It says, forgive people to keep Satan from getting an advantage over you. You pray in faith and you ask God for what you want and need, but if you have anything against anyone, drop it, leave it, let it go, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your sins and trespasses. God doesn't tell you to forgive people for them. He tells you to forgive people for you. You put yourself in prison when you don't forgive. So we have all these thousands of people that, yes, go to church and you love God. 
But you know what? There's levels of loving God. You can be as close to God as you want to be. But you can also have a very distant relationship with God because you have all this junk in between you and Him that bothers you and bothers Him. I'm going to try to provoke you tonight to understand that obedience is the very best thing that you can do for yourself. It is going to fast forward your walk with God and your life like nothing else. And even if you weren't going to get a thing out of it, you should still do it just because of reverential fear and awe for God. God said, do it, I'm going to do it. God said, don't do it, I'm not going to do it. Well, Joyce, it's hard. I said this morning, we are anointed for hard. Did you hear me? There's nothing too hard for God, and He lives in you. And whatever He asks you to do, He will do through you if you will trust Him to do it. Come on, you're anointed for hard. Quit being wimpy and whiny. Talking about it's so hard, it's hard. We're anointed for heart. How many things do you have that you're making payments on that God told you not to buy? Whoa, that was big. Now, when I say God told you not to buy it, once again, you know, I. I'm not talking about hearing voices. I just mean you knew that you knew. Wisdom said, don't buy that. Or you just got all stirred up in your emotions and you signed on the dotted line in the heat of emotions and you got the thing home, you didn't even like it anymore. Too late now. You don't even know where it's at anymore and you got to make payments on it for three years. Now you're rebuking the devil because you're under all this financial pressure. It ain't the devil, it was you. I mean, there are things that we need to blame on the devil, but let's don't put our own stuff off on him. I'm reading a book that talks about the different crosses that we have to bear in life and how how different things are used as a cross for different people. They said, for Job, it was the devil. The devil just tried to aggravate the living daylights out of him. For somebody else, it might be reputation. For somebody else, it might be finances, or it might be a person that becomes a thorn in your flesh. But they talked about different people in the Bible and what their particular cross was, and it said, Jacob's cross was his own Jacobness. And I related because I thought my biggest cross was my own Joyceness. Come on, now, I'm talking to you. Some of you, you're your own cross. You don't have to go get another one. I love you. Mm, love you, love you. And I love you enough that I'm willing to tell you the truth to try to help you. And I just want to tell you that Jesus didn't die for us so we could be frustrated. He said, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. My own special peace I give unto you. He said, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Come on. Well, the key to having authority over Satan is to first submit yourself to God. And that requires a willingness to be obedient and to walk in self-control. When we submit ourselves to God, then we can resist the devil and he will have to flee. And it's really important that we don't get the two mixed up in the order that they need to go in. I think I spent a lot of years in my life trying to resist the devil, but I had not yet fully submitted to God. And I just really want to encourage you, if you feel like the enemy is really giving you a lot of trouble, you feel like that he's aggravating you and tormenting you all the time, that you do have authority over the enemy according to the Word of God.
but you must first submit yourself to God. That's where your power is at, is in your submission to God. But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, it talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and you know taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, as we travel around the world, we meet so many wonderful children that have had such desperate need in their life. And we're so grateful to be able to help them. Today, we happen to be in Thailand. And this little boy's name is Somded. And he's had some tragic things in his life, but thank God, through your help, he's now living in the children's home here, and his life is looking very bright. His parents both died when he was six in an auto accident. And when they found him to bring him here to the home, he had had severe ear infections, which had caused hearing loss and lots of other problems in his ears. So he's had about two years of medical treatment on his ears, and thank God he can hear fine now. And so thank you for helping us provide homes for some dead and for other little boys and girls like him all around the world. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand. Ik heb gelijk. Die ander heeft het fout. Eén woord te veel en je hebt een knallende ruzie. En niemand heeft het gewild. Het kan ook anders. En ontdek nu hoe. Nu verkrijgbaar van Joyce Meyer. Leven zonder conflicten. Bestel nu het boek Leven zonder conflicten. Via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. De computerdeskundigen van Joyce Meyer Ministries werken keihard aan onze Nederlandse website. Hey, does anybody need any more coffee? Be right back. Ga naar onze nieuwe site joyce-meyer.nl en volg ons op Facebook.